Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The Hawley labial wire is a smooth, continuous curve that contacts the middle one-third of every anterior tooth. The loops are one half the width of the cuspid and are oriented to be approximately a millimeter off the tissues. The wire extends through the occlusion in close contact with the cuspid and first bicuspid and courses into the acrylic for retention. Holly labial wires are constructed usually of 0 .030 diameter stainless steel wire. The first step in construction is to make a pencil outline of the wire framework on the work model. The size of the loops is indicated and the position of the labial wire is indicated also. Trimming the base of the model away helps the wire adaptation in that you can uh, approach the wire bending from all four directions. The first step is to bend a smooth continuous curve that contacts the labial surface of each anterior tooth along the pencil outline. The wire is placed in the beaks of the plier and a smooth curve is bent. You place the wire in contact with the work model and see if you can get it to adapt to three teeth on the model, two or three teeth. Here it adapts to the cuspid and the lateral incisor. You mark the spot where it last contacts the model right in the middle of the lateral incisor. And then you can use that spot for orientation to return the wire to the model for adjustments. At that point, you make a small bend to bring the wire into closer contact farther down the length of the labial wire. You can do some of this bending with your fingers. Now the wire contacts the cuspid, the lateral incisor, and the central incisor. Now you continue this procedure of adjusting the wire until it contacts each labial surface. When the wire has been adapted to each labial surface. It isn't necessarily a half circle. You can see that the wire is not a perfect arc. But it is composed of flat sections and gently rounded sections. But there are no sharp bends in the wire, no sharp kinks. It does contact the labial surface of each interior tooth. And it's in a flat plane of space also. The wire is marked at the middle one third or at the middle, very middle of the, of the cuspid tooth, mesiodistally, to indicate the spot where the uh, 90 degree bend is made to start the loop construction. The loops are bent to be five to seven millimeters high and about four to six millimeters wide. The first step in bending the loop is to orient the wire in the beaks of the plier so that the first arm of the loop is bent at 90 degrees to the labial wire. You try the wire back on your work model. Now, during the bending of the loop, you can have the wire come up and contact the tissue surface. It's a fairly easy procedure to lift it away from the, the tissue contact after the loop has been constructed completely. 
you mark the spot where the curvature of the loop is about to is supposed to begin. Hold the wire in place, and mark the spot with your marking pencil and bend the wire around the round beak of the plier. You try the wire back on your work model, making sure always that when you try it back on, the wire is oriented along your pencil outline on the labial surface. The next step is to sweep the wire across the occlusion. This is done by making a bend in the wire right at this point here, right at the end of my fingernail there and sweeping it inward toward the, towards the occlusal crossing. You grasp the loop in the flat base portion of the plier and bend this section towards that occlusal crossing. It's not bent in quite far enough yet. We'll put a little more into it. Now, the wire comes in and makes its first contact with the occlusal crossing of the cuspid and bicuspid. Now, holding the wire in place along the labial surface and the loop in its proper position, you can mark the spot where the occlusal crossing bend should be made by simply bending the wire across the occlusion. You complete this bend with the plier, cut off some excess wire that's extending down into the pallet. You adapt the wire to lie about a millimeter off the palatal tissues with a series of small bends. This is the section of wire that embeds in acrylic. The extension into the palatal acrylic doesn't need to be too long. About half an inch is fine, 3 quarters of an inch. A small loop or curvature is bent into the end of the wire that extends into the acrylic to aid the retention. And one half of the labial wire has been ad adapted. To make the second loop, you mark the wire again in the middle of the cuspid mesiodistally and proceed in the same fashion to make the second loop. The second loop has been completely bent now and the extension of the acrylic has been formed. The wire is completed, adap adapted as it should be, and it's ready for waxing to the work model for placement of acrylic. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.